Hello everyone, Houston Math Prep here, making sure that you can find the greatest common factor of two numbers. We're going to use the prime factor tree method in this one. If we're finding the prime factorization of a number, that will always be unique, so it doesn't matter which order we find those factors. If they're prime numbers, then we can write them down and they'll always be the same. So my tree method, the idea of what I'm saying is, can I find two things that multiply to give me 24? It doesn't matter what I choose, as long as I don't choose one and the number itself, then I'm going to give Get somewhere in this process. So if I break 24 into let's say like 4 times 6, right, and I ask are either of these prime numbers, in other words, um, are they only expressible as 1 times themselves? And the answer for both of these is no. I can break 4 down further. I can make 4 into 2 times 2. Now 2 is a prime number because it is only 1 times 2 as far as factors go. So both of these are prime numbers. I'm going to circle these on my factor tree, and then with six also, six can be broken down further into two times three. So we have prime factors of six being two and three. So if you look at everything that is circled in my factor tree, that tells me that 24, um, the prime factorization of that is going to be two times two times two times three. I'm gonna write them in ascending order, so lowest first up to highest. So we have three copies of two and one copy of three. That's the prime factorization of 24. Let's do one more, and let's do it with 60. So prime factorization of 60 may be an easy thing to see that 60 is would be like six times 10. Uh, so in this one, we know that six already breaks down into two times three, so we'll keep breaking it down until we get to there, and those are both prime numbers, so we'll stop with those. And then with 10, I can break 10 down further into two times five, and those are both prime numbers. Neither of those can be broken down further except to one and themselves. So if I write these in ascending order, write the smallest one first, that would give me two times two times three times five, and that's the prime factorization of 60. So I've just written these in ascending order. Okay, looking at these, you can see if we're trying to find the greatest common factor of 24 and 60, what we will do is we'll go through each factor on the list that we have in both, and then we will pick out however many they have in common of each factor. So the first thing I see is there are twos on each list. So since there are twos on each list, I say, how many do they have in common? Uh, this one has three copies of two. This one has two copies of two. They don't both have three copies of two, so I can't use three copies of two. They do both have at least two copies of two. Okay, so that tells me that the greatest common factor is going to have two copies of two as part of its prime factorization. Then the next thing I look at, uh, they both have threes, um, and they both have one copy of three, right? So they both have at least one copy of three, so I'll go ahead and put a three in there as well. If I look at 60 has a prime factor of 5 in its factorization, but there is no factor of 5 in 24. So since they do not have a 5 in common, both of them, 5 isn't going into both of them, then I wouldn't write that down. So my greatest common factor, the prime factorization of that, is going to be 2 times 2 times 3, which would give us 12 as the greatest common factor. Now some of you might be able to look at 24 and 60 and already see what goes into them. You might see all the factors and you might even be able to see that 12 is the greatest common factor, uh, and that's great. Uh, what we want to be able to do is use this type of thing if the numbers, are, you know, they don't have much in common or they're much larger than we're used to dealing with and we're trying to figure out what it might be. Uh, let's look at another example here. So if we have uh, the prime factorization of 252 and 630, so let's first look at 252. Um, it ends in an even number, so I know that it's divisible by 2. So if I cut it in half, I would say it's 2 times something, right? So 2 times, if you divide that by 2, it'll give you 126. Now, I know that 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to keep that. 126 is still an even number. It ends in 6, so I know that I can at least break that down into 2 times something else, right? So 2 times something gives me 126. If I'm not sure, I can take 126 and divide by the 2, and that will give me 63. So I break it down into 2 times 63. And again, any order that you see the factors in and you break it down, you'll get the same thing in the end. So 63... I could break down as 9 times 7, 
9 can be broken down further, 7 cannot, so we'll keep the 7. And then the 9, we'll go ahead and we ran out of room here, so we'll go ahead and say 3 times 3 for the 9, and both of those 3's are prime. So if I write the prime factorization for this, that's a pair of 2's, a pair of 3's, and a 7. So let's do the prime factorization of 630. So if you, you know, maybe you see that it's divisible by something. I'll just say I see that it's divisible by 3, let's say. So I say 3 times something will give me 630. So 630 divided by 3 is 210. Uh, 3 is prime, 210 is not. So let's say I break down 210, and I could say it's maybe it's divisible by 3 again. So 210 divided by 3 would give me 70. So 3 times 70, the 3 again is prime, the 70 is not. So if we break it down further, I would have maybe like 7 times 10. Uh, the 7 is prime here, and then the 10 will break down into 2 times 5, and both of those are prime as well. So we get that the prime factorization of 630 is going to be one copy of 2 there. I have a pair of 3s. I have a 5 and a 7, so if I write all of that down, I get that as the prime factorization. And now if I look at what is in common and how many are in common, so here I have two copies of 2, here I have only one copy of 2. So we have one copy of 2 for sure in common, so I will keep one copy of 2. So the greatest common factor will have two in its prime factorization. If I look at the threes, both of them have a pair of threes, so they share a pair of threes in common in the prime factorization, so I will also write down a pair of threes. You notice this one over here, 630, contains a five. This one does not contain a five, so they don't have a five in common. They do, however, have a seven in common. They both have a one seven in their prime factorization, since they have at least one 7, we will go ahead and multiply by 7 as well. So the greatest common factor, the prime factorization of that would be 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. In other words, the greatest common factor of 252 and 630 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7, which is 126.